This is the DIY Marketing School Podcast. I'm your host and your marketing coach, Melanie Diane Howe. And today, I'm gonna give you five ways you can enhance your live stream videos. Well, hey there, my friends. Oh, I hope you're having a great day. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know, maybe you're watching in, or watching, listening in the shower while you're getting ready. You're probably not listening while you're commuting to work right now because things are kind of crazy right now and a lot of us are working from home. But I wanted to talk to you guys today about taking your Facebook Live game to another level. Now, maybe you aren't even doing Facebook Live yet, or maybe you have been doing Facebook Live for quite some time. It doesn't matter because the tips I'm going to share with you today are going to help you increase engagement and get more results from your live videos. So what do I mean by up leveling or leveling up your your live game? What I simply mean is just doing more than just grabbing your phone and going live. So we're going to talk about some elements that will actually enhance the experience of your live stream. Now, let me just say this. If you have never gone live before, do not feel like you are required or need to do these things, but also know that these things are not unreachable. All of the tips I'm going to give you or the um, strategies and tactics I'm going to talk about today are very doable. So I do not like to share tips that require, you know, complex learnings or real expensive software, because guess what? I'm a DIY marketer too. I'm doing it myself and I like to figure stuff out. I don't have the patience for things that are complicated. I don't have the budget for things that are expensive. And I know that you don't either, right? So I like things that are very plug and play. And I'm going to share some things with you that you can absolutely do. Anybody, anybody can do these things and add these elements uh, to increase the engagement and get better results in their Facebook Live videos. So um, so I'm going to dig into five of these tactics, but before we get started, let's kind of talk a little bit about Facebook live in general. Now, I also want to let you to know that you can go live on Facebook, but you can also go live on YouTube. You can go live on Instagram and you can even go live on LinkedIn. If you are an approved LinkedIn live person, you have to apply for it. They have to approve you. You then get access to going live on LinkedIn. I am not in that small, teeny, tiny population yet. I have applied for LinkedIn Live, but personally, I have not been approved just yet. It's a very, very, very limited number of people that are currently approved to go live on LinkedIn. So, um, and then, so what I, I wanted to say that so that you understand that a lot of these social platforms are now, you know, giving us the opportunity to create live video. And the reason for that, oh, you can also go live on Twitter, Periscope. I always forget about that one. There are others, uh, there's other live streaming platforms out there, but those are the the main social media platforms I wanted to talk about. Uh, so you can go live because going live and having, creating live video is one of the most authentic ways that you can actually show up online. And all of these platforms want us to be authentic. They don't want anybody being fake. They don't want anybody trying to bamboozle anybody. You know, they just want authenticity and they want to create connections. And that's, you know, why it's called social media. And all of them will, I mean, almost all of them, but especially Facebook has gone on record to say that live video is by far going to get you the most results on your post types. And so, you know, if you haven't listened to episode seven of this podcast, it's called how to embrace Facebook live for increased engagement. Go ahead and just make a note to go back and listen to it because I cover a lot of the reasons why you should be doing Facebook Live in that episode. And so if you're kind of still on the fence about it, not really sure if you should be doing live video, then I want you to go back and listen to that episode. And I want you to, to hear the things I talk about. I also share a lot of ideas for going live uh, for live videos. And I talk about even some things with, um, you know, how to look good on camera and whatnot. So those are, um, there's basically four main areas of where people are kind of objecting to Facebook Live. And so I talk about um, those things and how to kind of get you over those those hurdles, if you will, for going live, right? So, um, but let's talk a little bit about the different types of live streams so that you know what I mean by basic and up leveling and all that fun stuff, right? So what I mean by like basic is really just grabbing your phone 
and clicking go live, right? And I actually still do this. I mean, I still think there is room in just about any live strategy or any social media marketing strategy for just grabbing that phone spontaneously and going live, right? I always recommend if you can use a little tripod, use a little tripod for stability and because your arm gets tired holding your phone up. Believe me, I've done it. I can speak from experience. But that's basically, that's like the most basic level of live video. And don't get me wrong. Basic sometimes has a negative connotation. It's not bad. It's just, that's the simplest Ba- most basic, it's the literally the low, like the, the simplest level of live video you can create. And so that's what we mean by just, Hey, grab your phone, go live. That's the, that's the lowest level, basic level, simplest, easiest, whatever. And I encourage everyone to start there. That's where everybody should start. You should just start by grabbing your phone and going live. And for some people, that's all they do. They, that's the only kind of live videos they do. In fact, there are some really big people out there, really big names that that's still basically all they do. They just have a very basic live stream show. Rachel Hollis, for example, who is a you know New York Times bestselling author. She's a huge thought leader. If you don't know her name, you might have been living under a rock. I'm not sure, but look her up. And she goes live all the time and just it's just a basic show. There's nothing to it. So don't feel like the tips I give you today mean that you can't get results unless you do them. I just actually want you to consider adding these enhancements to your show because I actually think that they'll get you even better results. But the biggest reason and the biggest um, benefit that um, this is going to give you doing these kind of um, added elements to your show are going to give you is it's going to actually help you stop the scroll. It's really going to do two things. It's going to stop the scroll and it's going to keep people in your video while you're live. And so what I mean by this is that, you know, our news feeds are busy, right? We have, a, there's a lot of competition in our news feeds and, you know, Facebook's only going to show us what they think is interesting and what they think we want to see. And that's all based on the algorithm. And if you're not real up to speed on the social media algorithms, uh, go back to episode four of this podcast. I talk about the algorithm and I, I help you understand what that means. And so again, your market, you don't have to stop listening to this episode. Just maybe think about going back and listening to it. And I'll put all the links I mentioned in the show notes as I always do. So, you know, if we think about live video being one of the, the most, you know, engaging types of video, it's because people actually, it tends to catch their attention. So when we're on our newsfeed and we see that somebody's live, we're like, oh, what are they doing? What are they live about? Oh, they're live right now. There's something about it that feels uh, like time is of the essence. It creates a sense of, a sense of urgency to check out the content because it's live right now. Now, also the live videos, of course, stay up and people can watch the replays, but our real goal is to get people to watch while we're live. And so when we add these enhancements that I'm going to go through, it actually creates more interest and more intrigue, and it will get people to pay more attention to you. Again, stopping the scroll and then checking this piece of content out that you're producing in the moment. But the other thing it's going to do is by enhancing your show or enhancing your broadcast, it's going to actually help people want to stay involved. It's going to help people stay. It kind of creates extra interest. And I think it'll make more sense when I go through each of these individually to help you understand why that would be the case. So without further ado, how about I do that? How about I dive in to these five enhancements that you can create or do for your live broadcast? Um, And I'm going to go through these one by one. And then after I go through them, I'm actually going to tell you how you're going to be able to make these happen. Okay. So first I'm just going to go through them and then we're going to talk about how you can make it happen like in a little bit more detail. So the first enhancement that you can do to uplevel your Facebook live experience is to share your screen. So you might be saying, well, why would I share my screen? Well, one reason you might share your screen is to show some PowerPoint slides or keynote or Google slides, whatever it is you use. Maybe you need to do a presentation or you want to show a presentation, right? Uh, You can actually share your screen and show these slides. I recently had to do this. I was supposed to be giving a seminar in person. And uh, obviously with everything going on in the world right now, no, there's no large gatherings. So these types of things are basically canceled. But they said, hey, can you do it virtually? And I'm like, well, heck yeah, I can. And so I just did a Facebook Live presentation instead. And I was able to share my PowerPoint screens no differently than I would have shared them on a projector screen. 
And so it was just on the computer screen versus up on the projector where they were viewing in person. So I was still able to do this presentation. So you can still do webinars, seminars, all kinds of stuff in these live broadcasts and you can share your PowerPoint. Another thing you might want to do is to show pictures. So let's say, for example, you're in the business of, you know, teaching people how to paint furniture. Well, you could actually do a live stream and you can show them like right there in your studio or home or wherever. But you can also talk about why they, why people might want to take an old piece of furniture and paint it instead of taking it and throwing it out or whatever. You could show some before and after pictures. And so you can just you know, share your screen and you can display these pictures of the before and afters. You could do this by just sharing photos or you could actually put them in a PowerPoint as well, kind of like the example I just described. Um, maybe you're an interior designer. You want to show some before and after pictures to talk about a certain design uh, strategy or, or strategies, a certain design tactic that you've been implementing lately. So many different ideas about why you might want to share your screen. I like to share my screen a lot in my live videos because I do a lot of demonstrations of like software applications. So I've done live streams where I pulled up Trello, which is an app that I love to use for brainstorming and gathering ideas. I've pulled up Asana on a live stream before where I talk about project management, all kinds of stuff. I do a lot of this uh, when I'm explaining how to do something and I'll do it in a live demonstration and sharing my screen is how I do it. And it just adds that extra element, right? Um, so the second enhancement that you can make to your live stream video is to bring on a guest or multiple guests actually, uh, at the same time even. And I love, love, love bringing on guests for a few reasons. One, I like to mix it up. I like to give my audience a variety. I mean, I, yeah, I mean, I know they're there to learn from me, but I love to be able to bring other people to the show to just mix it up. I mean, it's not just all about me. I actually recently did this with a good friend of mine, Crystal Prophet, who is, she has a podcast called The Prophet Podcast. And she is an, a podcasting expert. She teaches people how to, you know, launch and produce and market their podcasts. And of course I have a podcast. And so I obviously can do some of that, but she knows way more than me. She geeks out on it way more than I do. And her whole business and her whole podcast is around generating, creating podcasts and how podcasts can help you boost your business and all that stuff. So I brought her on as a subject matter expert to come uh, and talk about podcasting. She was actually on the show. So check out episode 29. She was actually on my podcast. But what we did was we actually... After that podcast released, we went and did a Facebook Live show as well where I brought her on and we talked even further. We took an even deeper dive into the topic of should you start a podcast in the year 2020. And it was so fun. It was great. But I've had other guests on my show before. And here's something I can tell you about bringing a guest on. Not only does it show that you've got other ways that you can help your audience and you can bring these subject matter experts in to help your audience but it also creates another element of interest. Uh, all of my podcast, or excuse me, all of my Facebook live interviews where I brought a guest on have performed really, really, really well. Like some of my top videos from an organic reach standpoint. And there's a couple of reasons for that. One, just when you have another person on the show, it just, again, it adds interest. People stop. They actually want to pay attention. They want to learn. It's something new that they can learn about that you haven't talked about before. And the other reason is because a lot of times when you have a guest on your show, they are also going to share that broadcast. And when they share that broadcast in their feeds, whether it be their personal feeds or their business feeds, there's a whole nother audience out there that you may not have had any exposure to. And so every single time I do have a guest on a show, I increase my followers. I get new people that start learning from me. I get more people that want to join my uh, free Facebook community. I get more people that like my page, that tune into my content. And that's what we're trying to do. We always want to be growing that following, right? We want to be attracting new people into our world so that we can make a bigger impact and a bigger difference. So I love having guests on and the types of guests you can have subject matter experts, you can interview customers, you can interview vendors that maybe you partner with. There's a bunch of opportunities for how you can bring a guest on your show, just depending on what your business is and what it is that you do. Okay, so the third thing that I love to do as well is display comments and, you know, the comments that come up when people comment on your, on your live stream video while you're live, actually bringing them and displaying them on screen. Yes, there is, you can do this. And again, I'm going to go through how you can do this when I get done with all five of these uh, 
enhancements. But literally, I love doing this when I'm doing any kind of demonstration or teaching and people have questions. Sometimes I even do a live Q&A where I'll say, hey, I'm going to go live and I'm going to answer any of your marketing or small business questions at all. I'm going to do my best to answer anything to help you out. And I, when they get the question, they ask the question in the comment, I pull the comment up on screen. It shows their name, their picture, and their question. I love to do this because it showcases them, right? Kind of gives them a little showcase and attention. But then it also, it's me when I'm answering that question, anyone that is maybe multitasking, uh, they're going to, you know, know what the heck I'm talking about. They may have missed the part where I repeated the question, but then they see the question on screen, they can kind of get caught back up. The other reason is because a lot of people are going to come and go in your live broadcast. And so if someone comes into that broadcast after I've read the question out loud and I'm answering it, they aren't going to know what I'm talking about. But if they see the question on screen, then they know what I'm talking about. The other thing I really like about displaying questions is, is it actually helps people know what to do. It kind of like gives them instructions like, oh, we're supposed to ask questions. I should ask a question. Maybe she'll answer my question. Maybe she'll display my question and answer my question. So it kind of like coaches people along. I find that when I display comments, I get more comments. So I love displaying comments and questions. And again, it could be questions, but it could just be comments too. So sometimes people jump on and they've got something to add to it. Like what I'm talking about, I'll pull it up and I'll like agree with them. Or some people just, you know, they're being funny and they just have funny things to say. I'll pull that up and and talk about it as well. But anytime I display those comments, I get more comments and that is ultimately what we want. And that is ultimately what makes those live streams even more fun when we're getting engagement like that. Okay. So the fourth tactic, kind of similar, but different is I like to use uh, what they're, these are called banners and tickers. And I love to use banners and tickers to kind of emphasize, you know, points that I'm making or display calls to action. And a call to action would be, I want somebody to do something, okay? So I want you to think about your, you know, the news shows that you watch. Think about, you know, whether it's CNN or MSNBC or the Today Show or whatever it might be um, that you're watching, okay? Uh, they obviously always have, something at the bottom. It'll say like, maybe it'll um, say breaking news and it'll have something displayed or it'll have the person's name and what they're talking about, especially when they bring on a guest. Right. But then at the, underneath that, a lot of times there'll be this little kind of scrolling, this little scroll bar underneath that. That's like going across the screen and text is sort of running across the screen, like a little marquee. Well, that's a ticker. So the, the first one's a banner and the other one's a ticker. And what I, I love using the banners when I want to emphasize points. So if I'm going to do a teaching and I'm going to talk about five of my favorite productivity apps for small business or marketing, right? Well, I can actually display in the banner, the name of each app as I talk about it. So I can literally talk about Asana and it'll say Asana for project management and the banner. And then when I move to the next one, Trello for brainstorming, it might say Trello for brainstorming in the banner, right? What, whatever I want to do there. So I love using banners to emphasize the points because it's the same thing. It kind of keeps people, you know, on task with what you're talking about, keeps you on task with what you're talking about. If you're anything like me, sometimes you can go down a rabbit hole or get a little off topic. Um, but that those banners really kind of, they're like your little agenda, right? And just like I said about, you know, it it, it keeps people in tune, especially if they're multitasking, they can see what's on screen and know what you're talking about. But again, all of this kind of like adds that interest. So when people see your live stream in the newsfeed and they see the stuff on screen, they're more likely to click on it and check you out. Okay. So that takes me to, oh, sorry. I also like to use the banners as for calls to action, but I more so like to use the ticker, the marquee for a call to action. And a call to action could be something like post your questions in the comments and I'll answer them live. And it would just scroll across the bottom continuously until you turn it off. And you can have different tickers. You can actually turn on and off. You can have like three or four tickers for a show. Even you can, I mean, you can have as many as you want really. And then the other calls to action might be, you know, if I'm talking about, you know, if I'm interviewing Crystal, for example, and we're talking about one of the podcast episodes we did together, I might put in the marquee, have you subscribed to the DIY Marketing School podcast yet? You know, or make sure you subscribe to the DIY Marketing School podcast, right? And so I love using that stuff. It kind of creates that really fun experience. And honestly, they're just fun. They make your show fun. You feel like a real life broadcaster on the news and it just makes it super exciting and fun. And it's fun for your users too. 
So I'll come, here's my last one. My last one enhancement is for you to uh, create a branded experience. And you can do this by adding your logo to your live stream, customizing the colors of the things, the features, those, when I talk about those banners and those tickers, and even how the comments are displayed, you can actually customize how those are displayed, the colors, right? And you can also, depending on uh, the software you're using, which I'm going to go into next, uh, you can create what are called overlays. So these are, um, they're called overlays, but some people actually call them frames because typically they're designed as a frame. Um, and so what a frame would be is it might could be a unique border that you've created. Um, and the border may just be something at the top of your window, like the, think of the video window. So if you, um, if you watch any of my, if you watched any of my recent Facebook lives, you're going to see that I actually am using custom overlays. So at the top of the screen, it actually says, uh, DIY marketing live with Melanie Diane Howe. And that's kind of like this overlay that I've created for these live video shows that I've been doing lately. I actually don't put my logo in the corner. Um, I have it available to click on to add if I want, but I don't have it because I have that overlay that I created instead. And then of course, all my colors uh, for all my banners and tickers and all that stuff, it's all branded. It's all custom branded for my show for uh, that, that matches my brand. And again, this is going to just help you further um, differentiate yourself from the other you know, uh, the basic level live streams or even anybody else's live stream because you're actually branding it for you. Um, I, I think that this is something that sounds intimidating, but it's not as intimidating as it sounds, I promise you. So uh, I'm not gonna go into all the logistics about how you create those overlays, but I will tell you, uh, customizing the colors is very easy. Adding your logo is very easy. The custom overlays would be like a next level thing, uh, but you can do it. As I said, I'm not teaching you or talking to you about anything that I feel requires a ton of unique skill or training or money, okay? I don't ever... I, do, I pride myself on not doing that. We've got to be scrappy, but it doesn't mean we've got to be crappy, right? Okay, so how do we do all these things? I talked about sharing your screen, bringing on a guest, pulling up comments. I talked about using banners and tickers, and of course, branding your show by adding some, some enhancements to the visual aesthetics of it. Now, here's the deal. You can't do any of this stuff if you're just using your phone to go live. Uh, you've got to use some third-party uh, applications. There's a bunch of them out there um, that you can choose from. So um, I want to talk about an app that I have recently started using and I am absolutely obsessed with it. Like I love it. I love it for a lot of reasons and it's called StreamYard. And I will um, let you know that I've got some information for you that actually will, I've got, I'm putting some content together that will help you understand further about what StreamYard can do, but StreamYard can help you do every single thing I just described. Um, if you have listened to me or followed me for a while, you may know that I uh, have used to be an advocate and used to talk about an app called BeLive TV. If you use BeLive TV or if you've um, you know in, uh, looked into it before, BeLive TV will do these things that I just described as well. Um, but I actually have recently moved over to StreamYard and that is now officially the recommended app that I want to encourage people to use for a number of reasons. I won't go into a lot of detail. I just think that for the money and the features, but also the support, the community that you um, get to be a part of on Facebook, the support community of other users, um, as well as the user interface. And the user interface is basically the platform itself and how it's just, it's more intuitive. I think that it's a more stable product. It's a more stable application. Uh, I found that I was having some issues with BeLive. I started doing some research. Other people were as well. You give, you know, all applications are going to have bugs. They're going to have issues, right? And you got to be patient sometimes and let them work through those bugs and those issues. I personally just found that the, you know, speed of resolving some of those issues wasn't where my standards are uh, with BeLive. And I, once I found out about StreamYard, I started using it. StreamYard has been around for a few years. I did look at it a couple years ago. I think it was a couple years ago. It was a while ago. And it was pretty basic, but they have gone leaps and bounds. And that is now, I mean, it is awesome, you guys. So I just want to um, get that out there, get that out of the way that I, I'm a big believer in StreamYard. There is a free version and there is also a, um, there are paid versions as well that you can up level for more features and more usability. 
I highly encourage you to just start with the free version and play around with it to see if you like it. And then if you like it, I would definitely consider upgrading to the basic version or the pro version to add even more features. So let me go through this really quick. So sharing, sharing your screen, you have to use a desktop computer, obviously, to share your screen. And you, of course, have to use an application to share your screen. Uh, Facebook used to give you this option where you could share your screen, but it was honestly a little silly because you basically started the live video sharing your screen and then you couldn't unshare your screen. I think this was more for gamers. I think they kind of added that little feature for gamers. Um, I They are always changing the platform. They're always changing the abilities inside of their Facebook uh, live producer, Facebook creator kind of studio stuff. So, you know, that could be different, but I just, I really like the third party applications because they can actually add even more things. You can definitely share your screen when you use StreamYard and it's very easy to do and it's fantastic. Um, so bringing on guests. So it used to be with Facebook that you could actually, as long as you were on a mobile device, you could bring on a guest. In fact, that's how I started bringing on guests to my show was going on mobile and bringing guests on as long as they were on mobile as well. For whatever reason, they've actually removed this feature. They removed this feature sometime in 2019. Uh, you can no longer bring a guest on to your show unless you use a third-party application. This is for Facebook. Um, and so you can still do this with Instagram, but you cannot do it on Facebook. You can't bring that guest on. Um, and then the displaying of comments, uh, you know, you can uh, do this with almost any of the third-party apps that you can use to go live. But I love how StreamYard does it. They make it very easy. The user interface is super great about it. Um, you can bring these comments up, display them, and take them down. The interesting thing about comments, and I'll say this is another reason why I really like StreamYard, is if you are going to go live inside of a Facebook group, then you actually aren't going to be able to, if you use an, uh, one of these applications, you aren't inside the dashboard, you cannot see who's commenting. It will literally say Facebook user and it will have the avatar and you can still pull the comment up, but it will display it as the way you see it. It'll say Facebook user and it'll have an avatar. And this is because of the privacy policies with Facebook inside of a group. It's a, it's a private group, right? So if you're using an application where you can pull comments up, you, you know, Facebook knows that you can download your video when you're done and go put it wherever you want. You can put it on YouTube, you can put it on your business page or your personal, wherever. And if that person's inside of a private group, they may not want or authorize that you do that because they're in the private group. It's kind of like they're behind closed doors and now you've taken what they've done and you're showing people outside of those closed doors. Now here's the, here's the workaround with that. When you go live with StreamYard, there's an option where you can say post, uh, you know, authenticate, auth authentication, whatever that word is, <laughs> authenticating instructions. So your users inside your group can click on a, a little link and they can basically say, I allow for my stuff to be shown. And when they do that, then their picture and their uh, name will display. And most people don't care. Most people are totally fine with this. And so, uh, you know, I know that Be Live TV does not automatically do that. So you're basically, you can't get that authentication with most of these other apps right now. I love how StreamYard gives them the option to authenticate it. And then they, you can actually display their name and their comment. Again, I'm going to show you uh, an example of that uh, on the resource page that I've created for you guys. So, so bear with me there. So um, I love that. So, okay, using the banners and tickers, you can do this in StreamYard. You can create a bunch of banners. You can actually create a bunch of tickers and you can, again, click on them, turn them on and off. Love it. Freaking love it. And then, of course, that branded experience, you can add your logo. You can actually add multiple logos and switch around with them if you want to. And you can customize your color. And another thing that's really a differentiator with StreamYard is you can create multiple brand experiences. So you can have like brand number one and brand number two. Brand number one might be, for me, it might be DIY marketing, you know, with Melanie. And then brand number two might be something about my podcast. And if I wanted to d use different colors for each one, then I could totally do that if I wanted to. And I love that you can actually create these, um, you can save these different brand experiences and just decide which one you want to use. That may not apply to you. You may not need that. But if you're managing multiple businesses, you could actually use StreamYard and use it for both businesses. And then you could create 
different brand experiences. So that, you know, might be one of the ways or one of the reasons you might want to do that. Uh, I thought that was really cool. And it was definitely a, another differentiator for StreamYard. And then of course, those custom overlays, they actually allow you to not only create custom overlays, but also custom backgrounds. And you can have a bunch of different ones. You can toggle around with them all. Um, again, this all might be like, it's hard for me to describe it to you because I'm on a podcast episode and I'm basically telling you about things that are very visual and, but I'm trying to explain it to you with audio. So what I'm doing is, um, I've got this, I've got a page it's called, it's at melaniediane.com forward slash stream yard. And I encourage you to go look there because I'm going to, I show you some examples of these things I'm talking about. And then, um, that's also, you can also get access to, uh, one of my other free resources, which is an entire PDF uh, you know, document with 50 ideas for you to go live. So, you know, sometimes I know that people aren't sure, you know, what they would do or what they'd talk about, or they're like, well, what would I go live about? Well, I'm going to give you 50 very specific ideas. And many of those ideas would require you to use something like StreamYard um, to, to, you know, do implement some of those ideas in that document. So definitely check that out. MelanieDiane.com forward slash StreamYard. I will definitely have that in the uh, show notes here. And also, you know, I want you to know that there is the free version of StreamYard and there are some upgraded levels. You do not have to use the upgraded levels. There are a ton of features in the basic uh, plan for StreamYard. So, or I'm sorry, the free plan for StreamYard. So don't feel, don't think I'm sitting here trying to get you to go spend money. I just think that I want you to think about up leveling your Facebook Live. And in order to do that and to do these things that I'm talking about, you would need to use an application like StreamYard. Here's what I'll say there are other alternatives. Of course, I mentioned BeLive. If you're a Mac user, you should definitely check out Ecamm. Uh, that's E C A M M. I um, do not have a Mac, so I am not able to use it. I will tell you that while Ecamm can give, do all the things I'm describing and more, really, and it's not expensive. Uh, in fact, it's very cost effective. It does have a little more of a learning curve, but again, it actually will do even more. Ecamm is, you know, if you have a Mac, you should absolutely look at Ecamm and maybe even just go ahead and say, I'm going to invest the time to learn this application because you could do some super cool stuff with Ecamm for, again, it's very cheap. Um, it's a very cheap application uh, for you to use. So but again, if you're just looking for something super plug and play and you want to do the things I talked about, you might want to check out StreamYard, of course. And if you're a PC user, I would definitely recommend StreamYard. So, all right. So that is what I wanted to share with you guys today. And again, don't take this episode as I'm saying that if you're going to do Facebook Live, you need to do these things or you're required to do these things to get any kind of results. That's not true. I have been doing Facebook Live since it started um, and I've done all I've done a lot of really cool things without any of this stuff. I've even caught a fish uh, live on video while talking about marketing. Okay, so <laughs> I I didn't do anything except take my phone out to the fishing pond with me and put it on a tripod. Didn't use a microphone, nothing. So you can still do really cool things and a lot of really fun things at that super, you know, basic level of going live with just your phone. And I do not want you to take these things and make, make you feel like you need to do them in order to go live and get results. I'm just giving you some opportunities to stop the scroll, but also keep people engaged on your show. But the other thing I want to say is when you start doing stuff like, you know, sharing your screen and doing demonstrations, showing pictures, bringing on guests, you know, branding your experience, it becomes even more fun. And when things are fun, you're more likely to do more of it. And that's how I feel about live video. That's how I feel about podcasting. You know, yeah, there might be a little bit of a practice or a learning curve at first, but once you do it and you start to have fun with it and you see the results, you're going to want to do more and more of it. And that's what I want to encourage you to think about. So if you're an aspiring, you know, live streamer, then don't let this intimidate you. Just let this inspire you. And I want you to strive to get to this place, but definitely just go get started. Just go get started. And then if you're already, you know, dabbled your foot into the uh, live streaming space, um, or you're doing live videos right now, uh, maybe just at that basic level, then I want you to consider these things to take it to the next level. And again, give it a try, just try it, right? Um, use the free resource and see if it uh, works for you. See if you like it and have some fun with it. And that's what I want to encourage everybody to do today. So that's what I had for you guys real quick. The last recap, uh, one more time, you want to share your screen, bring on a guest, display those comments or questions, 
use some banners and tickers and create a custom branded experience with colors and your logo and some overlays and backgrounds. And that will help people stop the scroll, but also, you know, stick around and keep watching your video till the end, which we ultimately want. So I really appreciate you guys being here today. As always, uh, if you're new to this podcast, definitely get subscribed so you don't miss a beat. Uh, I appreciate that you're here um, and I'd like to get to know you better. So stick around and don't be afraid to reach out to me at any time on any of the socials. Um, and then, you know, I also want to say that if you like this show and it's helped you, um, one, I hope you're sharing it with your friends, but really, I would really, really appreciate it if you took the time to leave me a review uh, on any of the podcast applications. Those reviews help me. I like to get the feedback, but also they do help the podcast perform better and reach more people. And that's ultimately what I want to do. I want to make a difference in people's lives and I want to get people to put themselves out there with social media. And so if you are getting you know, if you're finding this podcast helpful and you enjoy listening, then if you could give me a review, I would really appreciate it. And honestly, here's the thing I'll say, do that for other businesses too, especially right now, your local businesses, your small businesses. One of the ways that you can help them right now is to go take that time and to give them a review on their Facebook page or their Google page or anywhere, leave them, you know, the five stars, but also type in a review about why you like that business. That is one of the easiest and simplest ways and cheapest ways that you can step in and help any business, especially those small businesses and those local businesses. So use that as a reminder as well. Think about those restaurants you love and those boutiques and those stores and those places and those service providers that you really, really appreciate. Get out there and get on their uh, stuff and give them a positive review. I promise you they'll appreciate it. And it does, it does help. It really does go a long way. So that's what I've got for you guys today. I hope you enjoyed this episode. And until next time, you know the rule. Go be awesome. Oh,